Honky. Honky, honky. It's a bit honky there. Yeah, it is. That hook sound. Hey, what is up everyone? Today we take a look at these powered launch boxes here. The PV6505 Piranha, the Orange Micro Dark and the Joya Zombie. So yeah, I got these little uh, lunch boxes here to see what it's like to have a real tube in your sound, but in the smallest way possible. I know there are overdrives with tubes, but they're not amps, so yeah. If you look at the spec sheet, we have basically three times the same thing. Oh, and they are not full tube amps, they are hybrid amps, which means they have a tube uh, preamp and a solid state power amp. You have the same preamp tube, you have 20 watts, you have gain EQ and volume, or how is it called on the orange? Volume shape gain, gain tone volume, you know. All three of them have an effects loop and come with their own power supply. And they have a headphone output, uh, the PV and the Zombie, they have an auxiliary input as well. The uh, orange is kind of more old school. The orange is also the only one which has only one channel, so it's it's very, very old school, and I like it. The Joyo is quite interesting because it has an antenna, um, which is a Bluetooth antenna, and you can switch it on or off here. So that is basically your auxiliary input. It is the only one to have a clean and an overdrive channel. The PV has two channels as well, but it's only a crunch and a lead and to be honest, the difference between those two is not really big. And I personally can't really see the point in having like a low gain and high gain channel on this tiny amp. It would have been better to have a clean and a crunch or lead overdriven, whatever. And as I already said, the orange is a single channel amp and it's just, you know, when you crank the volume and put the gain all the way down, it is very clean, it's very glassy. And if you turn up that gain and lower the volume, you really get the crunch uh, coming in. It is also the lightest of these. I don't know, this is like not even half a kilogram, I think. Yes, yeah, so before I want to talk in detail about how they sound, um, I wanted to show you a full mix first. Now the setup for the recorded songs is as follows. Guitar goes into the amp, goes into my, um, custom-made, homemade 4x12 cabinet with vintage V30 speakers in it, mic'd up with an SM57, uh, which goes into my Focusrite 2i2 interface and straight into Logic. There's only slight compression and a very, very basic EQ on the tracks. Now, please note that each time the last part of the song has been uh, recorded using the Seymour Duncan 805 overdrive in front of the amp, because I wanted to see how they react to an, uh, an overdrive. If it doesn't make sense to you to use an overdrive that is almost as expensive as the amp itself, I don't care, because uh, I'm also playing through my huge 4x12 cabinet. Okay, so now let's listen to the songs. We'll come back here, and then afterwards, I'm gonna mic up the amps on my 2x12 Blackstar. So everyone uh, saying, oh, you're using it with so expensive gear and stuff, you will get your basic setup and um, we'll just play around with the knobs and see what the amps do. Yeah, so that was a lot of talking already. I'm really sorry, but um, let's listen to those songs now. Oh yeah, and by the way, I totally forgot to mention that um, just as a reference point, a reference sound, I recorded with the same setup um, my Laney Ironheart on the lead channel, so you get an idea how a big 60 watt amp at the same level, at the same volume level, um, is sounding through this uh, setup. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, so let's talk sound. I think I'll go from my least favorite to my favorite. So my least favorite, and which is probably unexpected, um, is the PV. And that is because it has a very, very weird mid-range. And I don't like this EQ knob, which goes from notch to full, because it's just like a super weird, unnatural mid scoop boost curve i don't know it's just weird i like the aggressiveness i really do for me it's missing that high hiss of a real tube amp to be completely honest it sounds kind of digital to me and it has absolutely no reaction to dynamics you know for the intro riff i uh, back down the volume knob and then turn it up progressively and then the part begins there is no like you know progressive distortion or breakup of the amp at all. Also pretty much senseless is the crunch and lead channel. Um, I would have preferred to have a clean and an overdriven channel like on the zombie. Personally I think the crunch has a lot of gain already. That's a bit unfortunate. Yeah however it is very very aggressive which I really like. Uh, it looks cool with those um, red LEDs inside. Uh, it looks very mean and very much like an amp labeled Piranha should look like. Also this artwork here on top is really nice. Okay, um, I think now comes the hardest part, which is number two and which is number one. I can't quite decide to be completely honest with you. They are very, very different and they do different things better and worse than the other. Let's start with the, um, the zombie. I think overall in this segment that we're looking at, a small hybrid metal amp, this is definitely the winner of those three. No question about that. Because, <coughs> I'm sorry, because it has actually two channels, a real clean channel and a real overdriven channel. It has tons of gain, insane how much gain it has, because <coughs> when I record it, I think the gain was like there somewhere. Enough room for every guitar to have enough gain, enough saturation. The tone knob, works the best on these three in my opinion because it's a real tone knob and it's not like a weird mid-shape scoop thing i haven't used the bluetooth feature because i just wanted to you know focus on what the amp actually can do and i'm really impressed so it has really oomph in the lows um it's really aggressive even without overdrive you actually don't need an overdrive with this, to be honest. Absolutely massive sounding lunchbox, if you ask me. The only thing I would have changed during the development process, or the thing I don't like, is the mid-range. Again, I don't know. I don't know what these have with the mid-range, but it's not as honky, honky as the PV, but still a bit weird. This is definitely noticeable in the mix. It is not so noticeable in the room. I must say in the room, playing it in the room, it is very, very fun. And a bit like the PV, it lacks that high-end crispiness of a real tube amp. But overall, very, very good amp. I think it's uh, 166 euros on Toman with the Luxembourgish VAT. So last but not least, the super light micro dark from Orange. It is not so metal as the other two, which is not a surprise because it's an orange. And I don't mean that in an, a bad way. I, I just want to say it is very posh, old school, British orange. So I personally wouldn't classify this as a metal amp. I would say this is a mini rock amp because that is what it does best and what it does way better than the other two. This sounds truly like a tube amp, like a small one, but like a real tube amp. You, you can feel that tube when you're playing. Talking about the song again, the part where I roll on the volume knob, you can really hear how this comes to life and how the gain starts to build up and break up. This is wonderful. Now, if you use less gain and um, turn up the volume, you get very glassy, you know, uh, just, just before breakup 
cleans, it has the best reaction to the overdrive. On that behalf, I think it sounds the best only with the overdrive, which is a bit unfortunate. However, you get super, super nice, crunchy rock turns. I think it also has the most even and most natural sounding uh, frequency spectrum compared to the others. I wish this would have the tone knob of the Joyo on it and not this shape because this is again some mid scoop and boost um, knob and it's, I don't know. A problem that the orange has is that it's, it's too loud. I know it's unbelievable to say this but it's too loud or at least the volume knob has a bad algorithm. You start turning it up and it's like, okay, too loud. Too loud for bedroom. And you're like, there, you know? And up here it's like, nope, not gonna happen at home. So the same goes for the headphone output, which is immediately too loud. Plus, there is no cap simulation on this. So what you get on your headphones, if you plug it in here, is like a super fizzy, nasty, cabless uh, tone. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this phone's output. You know, you can go direct via just, you know, uh, grabbing the signal from the send out of the effects loop. But uh, yeah, don't ask too many questions about these things. Oh, and it's made in China and not in, uh, not in the UK, but that's okay. It has a QC label on it with two signatures, which is nice. To sum this up, I would say the Joyo is definitely the winner when it comes to metal sounds for a very, very low price and having a real tube in your chain. Also, it is the winner because it has two channels, two very usable channels, unlike the PV. The PV is cool, but it just, it lacks that top end. It is aggressive, but again, the mid-range is weird and having two channels basically doing the same thing mm, is not so nice. And I think the winner of my heart is definitely the orange. It has the spirit of a real tube amp, which the others don't have. And that's, that is what I like so much about this. I really like the look, I really like that it's so light and so basic. You know, the, the PV tries to have two channels and different sounds. This is just like one channel, there's gain, there's volume, I don't know, get on with it. So I hope everything that I wanted to say and I had to say has been said. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I really fell in love with this lunchbox here, this tiny bastard. You know, look at it, it's like... Yeah, anyway, that's it for today, guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.